In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to fully optimize your Google My Business listing. 100%. If you don't know who I am or what we do, I'm Kurt from One Base Media, and we've helped hundreds of tradespeople get better quality leads, fill up their diary, and grow their business with more profitable jobs. Okay, now Google have done a lot of changes to the GMB recently. More change. So I'll go through all the changes and how to fully optimize so you can get more leads, phone calls, appointments, or whichever you're looking to get out of the listing. Over the last 10 years, we've submitted and optimized well over 500 listings, done countless tests to see what works and what doesn't, and in this video, I'll show you everything we've learned, things to avoid, tools you can use, and a few tricks that will get you into the top three faster. After years of doing SEO, pay-per-click advertising, and website builds, we'd confidently say that having a strong Google My Business listing is one of the best returns on investments. It's free and all it takes is a bit of time to fill in all the details. Now this is gonna be an access all areas video, a wholly comprehensive look at every important step you need to take to fully optimize your profile for the best results. We're leaving no stone unturned, so grab a drink, get comfortable, and get ready to learn every behind the scenes secret we've learned over the last decade. So first of all, Google have changed the dashboard. You might remember you used to have a dashboard where you could edit all the details of your listing, but now it's laid out like this. You can see it once you're logged into the Gmail account that's connected to the listing. You just need to do a Google search for your company name, then you will see these tiles. You have edit profile, read reviews, messages, add photos, performance, advertise, products, services, bookings, Q&A, add in updates, asking for reviews. This one is for the review shortcode. And then if we look at the listing, you can click on edit information to fill out all of the business details. This video will show you how to optimize everything displayed here. First of all, let's run through the business information. To start, make sure your business name is correct. Now, we know it's tempting to stuff this full of keywords and we've tested this and it does work, but very temporarily. Let's say you're a plumber based in London, you could put Plumber London and then your business name in the title. Every time we've tested this, the map might show higher, but for a very short space of time. Google eventually sees it and replaces the name without the keyword. Basically, it's not worth it and has very little effect on the rankings. It's not worth it. We found the best way to put the business name in is to use the same name you have on your website and every other directory you've submitted to online. So if you have listings on Yelp or even other search engines like Bing, make sure the company name is exactly the same on your GMB listing as it is on these directories. Doing this keeps everything uniform across your online presence and Google ranks your Google My Business listing higher. Now for your categories. Google lets you place up to 10. There's some evidence to suggest that using just one has an impact on the rankings, but we found using as many as you can makes more of an improvement and you will show it in the top three of the map pack for more keywords. Make sure you definitely offer the service you are putting in the category though. A great tool we use is GMB Everywhere. It's free and I've left the link in the description. This tool will help you find all the categories related to your business. First of all, set up an account and download the free Chrome extension. Click on the Chrome extension and it will open up the map. Now search for your service in your location. Let's say plumbers in London again. Now, next to every listing, you're gonna see the categories and the button saying, find more. Click through to this and it will show every category they're using for their business, plus a ton of other suggested categories. Get a list together that are relevant to your business and list them in the category section on your listing. We've definitely seen a big increase in calls and website visits for adding more categories, but only if they are 100% accurate to what the business offers. Also, it gives you an extra boost if the category is mentioned on your website. This way, Google will pick up the keywords from the website and you will rank higher. Once you've done the categories, we want to move on to the company description. There are two main issues we see when we optimize business listing descriptions. They've either not been filled out at all or they are spammed with a ton of keywords. The best way to optimize a listing is to use the full 750 words available and mention a few of the keywords you would like to show up for in there. Don't spam them, just make sure they're in there in a natural way. If writing business descriptions is not your strong point, AI can definitely help with this. You can get this done by heading over to ChatGPT and get it to write it for you. For this example, let's say you're an electrical company based in London. In this instance, you could type something like this. Write me a 750 word business description for my electrical company. We are based in London and cover all the boroughs. We are a family run business and offer everything from small repairs to full rewiring installations. We have also been established for over 20 years. Use the keywords electrical repairs and fault finding. Now watch ChatGPT do its thing and write you a detailed company description. 
go in and make any edits and then put this into your company description. For your opening date, we've seen a definite advantage to business profiles that are older. So if you're just starting out, your business will have a disadvantage to profiles that were created before yours. You can edit this, but of course, it's always best to put the truthful answer in there to how long your business has actually been running. But be aware that you will have to work harder on the profile and you might have to wait a few years to start showing up in the top three if all your competitors' listings are more established. Next, your contact number. This is the same as your business name. We found the best number to use is your main office phone that is the same on all the other directory listings. Your website address, this is where you put a link to your main website. One of the main issues we see with this is people using the non-HTTPS version of their website. The best way to use the right URL is to just open up your website or Google your company name, click on the website, copy the URL and then use this. This will always be the best version to use. For the short name, we've seen no benefit to spamming this with keywords, so just use your company name. Business location, make sure this matches the address on your website and other directories. Now for service areas. You can use postcodes or zip codes depending on where you're based, but we have found you get the best response when you use towns or cities. This will essentially cover all of the postcodes in the towns that you list. Now, if your business only covers one town, then you can also add smaller postcodes as well that are listed in that town. This way you have given Google more information of where you cover and you're more likely to show in the smaller areas. Opening hours, just as the times are open and closed. Easy one. You can also add special hours for public holidays and any specific dates that you'll be closed. With the adding more hours, you can add specific times that you'll be closed. Now onto the more section. Again, we're gonna suggest filling out all of this. You want to fill in everything really to make the listing as complete as possible. So accessibility, amenities, planning, check all the boxes that are relevant and true for your business. Now your business description is complete. So let's go through the rest of the tiles. So with reviews, you want to respond to every review that comes through. A great way to respond is to reply and mention the service that you provided. So if you're a heating business, reply with something like, thank you for your review, we were happy to help with your boiler repair. This way you can get the keywords in the response and we've seen significant improvements to the rankings of businesses that use keywords in their responses. We're definitely not saying to spam the response with keywords, but do use them where you can. Now for messages, you can either turn this on or off. We'd recommend turning it on, but if you do, it's a good idea to download the app on your phone so they don't get missed. And they will because you won't remember to log in. Probably quite obvious, but this feature is where customers can message you directly through the listing. It works great for local service businesses and retail shops. For adding photos, you have three options. Photos from inside the business, your logo, and the cover photo. We would recommend updating all three. For photos from inside the business, add images of your team, projects, inside your premises, before and after photos of your work, and anything that will build more trust with your potential customers. You can also upload videos there as well. For your logo, make sure it's a nice, clear, high quality image. We usually resize it to 450 by 450 pixels. And for your cover photo, have a nice banner that shows all of your services or a picture of your premises or team. Now, for the amount of images you upload, we always aim for adding more than the closest competitor. So do a Google search for your service in your town and see who's at the top of the map listing. If they have 50 plus images, we would recommend doing the same or even more. A few optimization tricks is to name every image before uploading it. So if you're a landscaper, call the image something like garden-design.jpg or landscaping-london.jpg. This is just giving Google more information on what the image is. Now, another tool you can use is geoimager.com. Upload at least 10 of your images to this tool and type in the area it was taken. The tool will now geotag the image with the longitude and latitude. Now download the page and upload to your profile. This shows Google where the image was taken and it increases the chances of your listing running locally. Now all of this is great for image optimization, but we found one of the best ways to get images optimized is by encouraging your customers to include images on their reviews. Get them to take pictures of the work you did and then when they review your business to also include a lot of images in the review. This is magic for your business listing and will really help you get found for local keywords. Now onto performance. This is another one that's changed quite a lot over the last few years, but it shows you key metrics on what you're getting found for. So that's things like how many visits, phone calls, and also a lot more. So here you can take a look at how many people have viewed and what keywords triggered the views and the interactions. You can use this data later to optimize the listing further. On the advertising tab, this is for Google Ads. 
And if you're looking to run Google Ad Campaign, we have a full video on how to set up a campaign in the description. For products, this is an amazing way to get more keywords and services on your listing. Now, if you're not selling specific products that are shipped out to the customer, like shoes for example, then your service is your product. Like at this loft conversion company, we've updated their listing with house renovations, garden rooms, house extensions. So on the listing, click on edit, add a new product, give it a name, select category. We don't usually put a price in here, but you can if you want to. Add a description and then put a link in here. Now, whenever someone Googles your company name, they can scroll through your products and when they click on them, there will be a description and a link to the specific page on your website. We've seen a definite improvement to profile performance when adding product. For services, Google will automatically list a ton of keywords associated with the categories you've put in. Now, it's very tempting to click on everything to try and get as much exposure as possible, but do carefully think about everyone you click on. Make sure they definitely match up with the services you provide or you'll get a ton of nuisance phone calls and also it's bad for your rankings as it will dilute the listing and Google will be a bit confused about what service you do actually provide. On to bookings. Now, this is a great way to talk about online bookings. You can either link this to your contact page or if you have a Calendly profile page, you can use this so people can book directly into your diary. Next, Q&A. This is where customers can ask you questions. There is an option to ask yourself questions and answer them, but we wouldn't suggest doing that on Google My Business. Over time, people start asking you questions on here, so if you respond to them, it will give your potential customers more information about your company. Now, on to updates and posting. Updates are ready. I should update. This is one of the most powerful parts of having a GMB listing. If you scroll under your business profile, you can see where the posts are displayed. We've seen a significant increase in calls for businesses that post at least two times a week. To post on here, just click on add update and you have the option to add a generic update. This can be something that's happening in a business, an award you've won, a new review, just anything can be posted here. If it's a new service or something you want to promote on your website, you can also put a link in the post as well. For offers, you can add any upcoming offers. You can put a start and end date on these offers, add images, put voucher codes and links and anything like that. This is a great way to promote an offer you're running. And for events, you can do the same and promote any events you have going on. Like we said, it's good to post regularly on here. And if you're already posting frequently on other social media channels, then try using tools like Buffer or Hootsuite. These allow you to link all your social media channels, including your GMB listing, so that when you post once, it will post to all the channels. And last, but most definitely not least, we have Ask for Reviews. This is great for getting the short code to your reviews. Simply copy the link, send to your customers, and ask them if they'll be nice enough to leave a review. This really does work well, because if you ask a company to leave you a review, a lot of the time they don't know where to look or where to leave it. So by sending them this link, it automatically opens up the reviews and makes it easier for them to leave one. And we are done. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope you got a lot out of the video. So our goal here is to help you generate the best quality leads so you can fill out your diary with more customers and grow your business. And that's it from me. And by the way, if lead generation is a problem for you right now, then there's a link in the description that will help you solve that problem in under three minutes. I wanna say a big thank you again for watching this video. If you wanna see more like this, please like and subscribe and also leave a comment in the comment section letting us know what you think of the latest GMB updates. We read and respond to all the comments we get. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.